A Florida man shoots his boss after getting fired. Two Florida men were flying to go get tacos when their plane went down in the Everglades. A fight over miniature golf results in two Florida man stabbings. A Florida father threw his infant at the police after a high-speed chase. And a Florida woman set fire to a vehicle she thought it was her ex's. Turns out it wasn't. These are the stories for Friday. They're all from Florida because that's what we do on Weird AF News. Florida Fridays is our thing. I'm your host, Jonesy. Today's a special episode of Florida Fridays. I have five stories, but I inserted one that is not from Florida. See if you can guess which one it is. Those bizarre stories you hear about all the time that seem to only happen here in Florida. I know, right? Can't make this stuff up. It is just one of the many wacky news stories out of Florida. Why does the Sunshine State consistently produce such strange news? But what accounts for all this bizarre news? Is it the weather? Is it the people? Florida is full of the crazy stories. A Florida man shoots his boss after getting fired. Clearly wanted to keep his job, very dedicated employee. Felix Cabrera, age 86, oh boy, about that age that he probably should retire. Maybe that was the cause of this whole incident. He refused to retire, so the boss is like, Felix, if you're not going to retire, I have to fire you. It's time to go. You're 86. You just can't work the way that you used to when you were 56. He was an employee at the Sugar Cane Growers Cooperative in Belle Glade, for 31 years. My goodness. That's a commitment right there. Doesn't say what he did at the Sugar Cane Growers Cooperative. But when his boss told him he was fired, it's pretty clear what he did then. He begged to stay for one more year. He, Please, boss, let me stay one more year. Saying that he needed the money. He needed to make money for one more year. I don't know what his plan was. Maybe he was saving up to buy a houseboat. I mean buy some fishing equipment, maybe become a fisherman in his twilight years. Maybe make enough money to travel to another place to live out his years. Maybe he has family elsewhere. He wanted to go there. Who knows how he was going to spend the remaining years of his life. He was 86 years old. He was told, no, you can't work there. And what did he do? He pulled a gun out of his pocket and shot his boss several times and killed him. Killed the boss. It says here that Felix was arrested and faces murder charges. Of course, that's how it goes when you shoot your boss. I'd like some more information, though. It doesn't say what position he had at the cooperative. Was he an important figure there? Was this all he had in life? I've never liked a job so much that had I been fired, I would shoot my boss. It must have been a dream job at the Sugar Cane Cooperative, I'd imagine. I wish I had a job that I loved that much. Uh, that well, I, I mean, I do. It's stand-up comedy, but I don't really have a boss. Every time I've had a boss, I, I've hated that job. Really, I think it's maybe it's not jobs we got to get rid of. Maybe it's bosses. Maybe Felix is on to something here. I don't want to make light of murder, but <laughs> maybe bosses are the problem. <laughs> All right. Two Florida men were flying to go get tacos when their small plane went down in the Everglades. Jose Akari says he and his pilot buddy were flying from Tamiami to Arcadia to grab some tacos on Tuesday. Ooh, it's Taco Tuesday. Let's just hop in my private plane and go get some tacos on a Tuesday. I want your life, Jose, and your pilot buddy, that you could just get in your private plane and go get some tacos like it's nothing. You could probably walk to the corner and get tacos, but you're like, you know what? Forget it. We're not going to that taco truck at the end of the block. We're flying my plane to get tacos. I assume they're amazing. You were going to fly your plane over the Everglades? Their plane went down. The engine of their small plane failed. They landed in a remote area of the Florida Everglades, miraculously unscathed. Miraculously, yeah, because you know those Everglades are filled with things that will kill you, such as pythons, those old alligators everywhere, a bunch of toothless Floridians who will take your body into the swamp and do who knows what to it. Here's a quote from Jose. He was just so cavalier about the whole thing. We were like 2,000 feet, and we had an engine failure. We looked at each other. We were like, bro, we're alive. I mean, this doesn't happen very often. Now, it says here that the men were seen walking around the plane on the ground when the helicopters discovered them. They had to be hoisted by helicopter. That's how remote they were located. That's how remote they were located. <laughs> the, the men had to be hoisted up using a harness one by one. 
The Federal Aviation Administration said the single-engine Piper PA-32 made a forced landing in the Everglades, approximately 20 miles north of Ocho P, Florida. Ocho P, does that mean peeing eight times? Uh, that's a heavy night of drinking in Ocho P. <laughs> I peed Ocho times in Ocho P, Florida. Here's another quote from Jose. He's just filled with him. He just doesn't care. This doesn't phase him at all. He's going to get in his tank and drive to get burritos next week. We were going down and we were trying to reach I-75, I-75, sorry, but we couldn't make it. The fire rescue took the pilot back to Tamiami and brought Jose to a nearby fire control station where he reunited with his mother who slapped him in the face. I'm not sure if she slapped him. I would have slapped him as his mother because this is just dumb shit. You're just getting in these tiny little planes flying over the Everglades to what? To get tacos? Like this is an important thing? Like risking your life to get some tacos on a Tuesday? Yeah, you know, you need to be lectured at least, at the least, by your mom. Here's another quote from Jose. People don't usually usually survive this kind of stuff, man. And at the rate we were descending, like, we were in a total dive, bro. I was thinking about my grandpa, you know, he's up there. I was thinking, like, he'll save me. And he did. He saved me that day. <laughs> is, that how, is that what you believe? Okay, good for you. Although terrifying, it truly makes for a Taco Tuesday tale. Two men are lucky to live to tell. Finally, Jose joked around saying, well, bro, not a good day to get tacos, I guess. <laughs> he and his mother are still planning to get tacos later next Tuesday. But I hope you don't take a tiny plane, you dumbass. And by the way, there's one piece of missing information in this story. Um, I hate to come down hard, hard on our journalists here. I know it's a tough job, but like, there's really a very important piece that you've missed in this story, and that is, what is the name of that taco joint? Like, it's got to be great. I want to know possibly the best tacos in all of Florida, maybe even the country, that this guy risked his life flying a single-engine plane over the Everglades to get. Two, three, four. It's Florida Friday. It's that time of the week where we see what's going on with those Florida freaks. Everybody's on meth. The burglars are nude There's always alligators in those Florida pools Yay! A fight over miniature golf results in stabbings in Florida Of course Now a man is being held on two counts of first degree assault After allegedly stabbing some victims while he was playing miniature golf on Sunday It doesn't say what the fight was about uh, Perhaps they're gambling over miniature golf? I've never heard of such a thing, but maybe there's a whole underground miniature golf gambling ring that I was unaware of. There's cockfighting, there's dogfighting, and now there's miniature golf stabbings. That's what's going on here. <laughs> or maybe these guys take their miniature golf very seriously just in general. One of them was cheating. You know, maybe kicked the ball out from behind the castle when he wasn't looking. By the way, miniature golf in Florida, how dangerous is that going to be? There could be an alligator hiding in that little windmill, just jumping out to bite your ankles when you go for a putt-putt. Imagine. Okay, well, maybe the story gives us some more details here. 7 p.m. on a Sunday, the police respond to a report of a serious assault. They find two stabbing victims. I assume they find the guy, too. Uh, one of them is in the hospital with very life-threatening injuries, unfortunately. The second victim was treated on the scene for just a minor scratch. During the investigation, it was determined the suspect and the victims engaged in a physical altercation while playing mini-golf together. That's all that it says. And then what the guy's been charged with. So they obviously caught the guy. I'm looking at a photo with a guy. It doesn't look like a miniature golf kind of guy. I'm going <laughs> to be honest with you. I don't picture my mini golf guys with, you know, a bunch of forehead tats and what have you. It's just, uh, it's, well, sometimes thugs have got to let off some steam. So they go to mini golf. I had no idea. <laughs> if you saw this guy at mini golf, you'd be like, what is going on here? Is this bizarro miniature golf land? I mean, this just goes to show that everybody enjoys miniature golf. I mean, who doesn't? You could ask anybody. It's the perfect date. If, if you guys are just sitting around, you don't know what to do. Not everybody can agree on anything. You just suggest miniature golf. That's, everyone loves it. Even the vegans can enjoy the miniature golf. And I got to tell you, I do not hang out with vegans. A Florida man threw his infant at a deputy after a high-speed auto chase. 
A Florida man faces aggravated child abuse and other charges after he hurled his infant at a deputy near the end of a high-speed chase. I hope it was at the end after the high-speed chase was over and you didn't just chuck your infant out the window during the high-speed chase. Uh, No, no, that's not what happened. The 32-year-old suspect is seen being tackled by law enforcement as the deputies cradled the baby in a sky-blue outfit. Oh, big shout-out to that deputy that caught the baby. I'm looking at a photo of the scene here. A bunch of the guys have the, have, are on top of the suspect, uh, meaning the police officers are on top of the suspect. And there's one police officer in the middle of the road just h- handling that baby. Lovely, the poor baby. Uh, and I'm going to say that you should just take that, that baby with you, police officer, because you don't want it to go back to where it was. <laughs> That's for damn sure. You do not want the baby going back to that environment. So if you could just take the baby back to the police station, make it the baby of the police station. Now that Florida baby has a chance. That's just my opinion. All right, let's get some more information. The suspect who law enforcement identified as John Henry James left his car carrying his baby after the pursuit. It was in the evening. Um, The deputy Jacob says that, yeah, he just turned around with no regard and, you know, not a little toss either. It was an overhand throw. He threw his two-month-old at me from about six feet away. An overthrow, overhand, like a football. You would throw a football. And I caught that baby. Oh, yeah, he caught That was like the best touchdown catch of his life right there. Deputy Jacob saving a baby's life. Just unbelievable. Way to step up. I'd be frightened if you chucked a baby at me. I wouldn't know what to do. I can't even hold a baby, like, simply if you, if you held it, if you, like, handed it to me very slowly, like, and daintily, like you normally get held a baby. You know, with care, I still don't know what to do with the baby. I'm like, I know the head. I got to get the head. Get the head. The head The head can't flop all around. I got to prevent floppy head. The last thing I need is the baby to have a floppy head incident. Next thing you know, the head just rolls off onto the carpet. That's I have a nightmare that I'm holding someone's baby, my friend's baby, and then the head is on the ground, and it's my fault because I didn't hold the head. You got to hold the head. Cradle the head. Support it. Now, I know you want information on the baby. Uh, Deputy Jacob says that the baby was unhurt and they were able to relocate the baby to safety. It doesn't say what safety is, but I don't know what your definition of safety is, but I'd imagine this family isn't safety. (laughs) First of all, this father needs to never be around kids. (laughs) Certainly his own kids, never again. You chuck a baby at the police, you can get away. What kind of loser, not even loser, worse, worse. All right, that's not going to be funny where I go with that, so... I mean, I mean, like the bigger question is who makes babies with people like this? I'm just astounded at who people will make a baby with a high speed chase baby chucker. You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. A Florida woman set fire to a car that she thought was her ex's. Turns out it wasn't. Clearwater, Florida. She thought it belonged to her ex-boyfriends, detectives say. Her name is Carmen Chamblay, age 19. She now faces charges of second-degree arson, according to the Clearwater PD. She was arrested over the weekend. And uh, Chamblay started the blaze inside a white four-door vehicle. Uh, The trunk, specifically. She lit a fire in the trunk. Uh, Witnesses told investigators she left the scene on a bicycle. (laughs) That's how you want to do it. That way it's a fast getaway, you know, because if you're going to, you know, cause some arson, you just want a quick getaway, like on a skateboard or a scooter. (laughs) Smart going, Carmen. Uh, A couple of days later, police released the video of a lady with a purse slung over her arm feeding the flames. Police say they identified her as... Carmen Chamblay. She told the police she thought the car belonged to a former boyfriend. It didn't. (laughs) That's the end of the article. That's what it says. She told the police she thought it belonged to a former boyfriend. It didn't. End of article. (laughs) I need more information. I need to... (laughs) Like, how do you confuse your your boyfriend's vehicles? How many vehicles does this guy have that you just thought it was his and it wasn't? Or perhaps, you know, given that she rode away on a bicycle, maybe, maybe... 
She's usually in bicycle relationships where no one has a car, so she heard a rumor that her ex got a car. Maybe she thought to herself, oh, oh, he gets a car after he breaks up with me. All that bicycling around, you know? He gets a car afterward. And then she's like, but I don't know what the car is. I think it's this. She gets a description, second, third hand from somebody. And uh, for whatever reason, they don't have a video or a photo of his, of his new car that he got. So she has just a description to go by. It's like, oh, it's a white car with four doors. She gets on her bike. She's cruising around. She goes near his apartment. She's looking, oh, here's a car with four doors. It's white. And then, bam, lighting that trunk on fire. And then uh, she went over to his workplace, but it wasn't his workplace. <laughs> he works at Chick-fil-A, but she went to like the local oil change stop. Made a big scene. <laughs> Turns out he doesn't work there. And then... And then she went to the laundromat where he usually washes his clothes and she took clothes out the dryer that she thought was his and burned them in the parking lot, but they weren't his. She just can't get it together. <laughs> She's just a little off target with her revenge. All right, I know I got ridiculous there, but this is what Florida Fridays is for. Getting redonk! Ooh, yeah, another Florida Friday episode. Thanks to everybody who sent me Florida articles. We just can't get enough of this deplorable human behavior. Were you able to figure out what story did not come from florida one of them i'll let you know on uh, monday how about that but call in and or email me and guess funny jones at gmail.com 646-450-2012 or reach me on the internets internets on the social medias <laughs> so stupid at funny jones pretty much everywhere twitter instagram I got a message from somebody on YouTube. My podcast is on YouTube, and sometimes people listen to it there, and sometimes they make comments, and I, I hardly give them props, so let me get in there. A couple people left some nice comments this week. Uh, we got Goose Pimples, which is, which is just a great username. Goose Pimples says, hey, Jonesy, I absolutely love your show. Can't start my mornings without listening to my daily dose of weird news. I'm from the UK and found you through my Google Home about a year ago. But only just now thought of coming here, leaving you a message of appreciation of everything you do for free for everyone listening. Sorry, I should have sent you this message earlier. I know, I know, LOL, but at least it's a positive one. I love when people spend their time thinking, hmm, let me think how I can spend the next 10 minutes. Oh, I know. Let's listen to a podcast, which I do not like, and then take time finding them online to leave a bad review. <laughs> LOL. Anyway, never give up on your closet mate. Uh, much love. Much love from the YouTube channel Goose Pimples. Me and my wife, basically, LOL. We love you, man. I love you, Goose Pimples and Mrs. Goose Pimples. Or is it Mrs. Pimples? <laughs> it's a strange last name. Mrs. P is Mr. and Mrs. Pimples. So, <laughs> are you guys hanging out with Mr. and Mrs. Pimples? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, it, gets, it gets very sticky. It's a very... <laughs> uh, Terrible joke. All right, we're trying here. That, that was one of the most incredible reviews I've ever got. I love Goose Pimples... Big props to you, how you sort of uh, framed this kind of behavior that really makes me go, uh huh, what is wrong with you? Which is people leaving bad reviews. Taking the time. <laughs> I agree with you, man. And thank you for speaking for me. I appreciate that very much. Uh, we also got a message on YouTube from someone named Alec Luna. Alex says, uh, when I start getting hope in humanity, I check these out. Thankfully, you drop these right on time. Please keep them up. Uh, Alec is referring to how I, I usually will... I don't publish the YouTube episodes every single day. What I do is I wait for like a few of them to compile and then I put them all on YouTube at once, like four or five at a time. Cause I just, I ain't got time to do it every day. So I just kind of, I pick one day a week and just put them all up. Um, some people aren't uh, fans of that, but I just don't have time. Um, you know, I'm recording this five days a week. It's just, it's just a lot just to put it on a podcast. Never mind. YouTube is, is, uh, if I could hire an assistant or something, that might be the next step. But thank you, Alec, for uh, writing that nice positive comment. Um, I appreciate the support on all the platforms, of course. And if you would like to support the show by uh, giving Jonesy a couple of dollars a month, you can join the Patreon, patreon.com slash weirdafnews. And with that, you get access to a lot of additional weird af content that i have placed within the patreon there's enough content to last you weeks and weeks and weeks i posted uh what about two or three things this morning as a matter of fact all florida related because it is friday uh, sometimes i come across a story that's it's a it's 
it's not good unless you see it. It's like a visual story. Maybe there's a video attached to it or it, it's a funny photo. And in instances like that, where it just doesn't seem to fit an audio format, I put them in the Patreon. Um, so the videos and just it's, it's good for like visuals in there, I find. So yeah, see, I, I try to plan ahead, guys. Guys, I, there's a system here. In other words, I'm not just throwing shit in there. Um, a lot of effort goes into this. And, uh, and I appreciate all of you who have joined the Patreon. And uh, if, you, if you can't, because of financial reasons, I totally get it. I know what kind of position that a lot of us are in right now. And I, man, I feel you. If that's the case, then uh, you can help me by, if you'd like to support the show, if, uh, if you have a moment, just tell a friend about the show. Um, oftentimes you might find yourself speaking about podcasts that you might be listening to. Maybe you're at a barbecue and they're like, hey, what are you doing? You listen. They, it usually starts with, what are you watching? Um, what are you streaming? And then it's like, and then maybe it goes to podcasts. What are you listening to for podcasts? Maybe if you can think of mine, just, you know, maybe put it out there. That would be extremely helpful, especially somebody that you think might get some entertainment out of it. Somebody who maybe, may, maybe seem a little aggravated by the mainstream news might get a little relief from weird AF news. And, um, uh, lastly, I hope you're having a great weekend or you had a great weekend or you're about to have a great weekend. I love you all.